Hey everyone, Tams here. I thought I would share today some more detail about a hobby that I've been talking more and more about on Instagram. It's called letterboxing and it is a way for myself and others to get outside and inspire us to enjoy nature. If you've never heard of letterboxing, I believe it started in Great Britain, but it's a lot like geocaching or scavenger hunting, except it involves notebooks, uh, pen, paper, and rubber stamps. So all over the country, uh, you'd be surprised how many of these are hidden, but there are hidden little, people have hidden little plastic boxes usually, or they'll hide them in Altoid boxes or Ziploc bags. But people are hand carving rubber stamps and they put them inside some type of protective container and they put that along with a notebook inside the container and then they hide the boxes and then they put the clues on uh, websites. Now there's a couple that you can uh, use for clues, just Google letterboxing, but I use one called Atlas Quest and I'll link it below and I really like their clues and their site and the maps and it's just, it's very informative. So um, what you do if you're interested in this is just go on to the site and you look in your area and you may be pleasantly surprised how many letter boxes are hidden in your community. I was really shocked how many were hidden in my community just within a five mile radius and very shocked at how gorgeous some of these stamps are. I'm going to show you an example. Uh, one of the things my community is known for is being the uh, area where the movie Edward Scissorhands was filmed. And one of the scenes from that movie, if you've ever seen it, I love that movie. Um, Edward is going to open up a hair salon and a shopping center. And that particular shopping center is very close to me. It's called Southgate Shopping Center. And there is a letterbox hidden there at the shopping center. You have to go online and look up the clues for yourself. I can't tell you uh, the clues, but I will share with you the stamp because this has been my favorite stamp so far. Look how great that is. If someone carved that. <laughs> and it's so, I love clues. I loved this sort of thing when I was a kid. There's a nine-year-old in my world that seems to be enjoying this with me. We love getting the clues and going to search for them. Uh, some of them are in, you know, public places like libraries, post office, you, you name it. Some of them are very easy to find. You really don't have to hike very far or look very hard. Others are located in state parks, national parks, local parks, cemeteries. Um, you do have to do a bit of hiking, but again, the website will give you an idea of how much hiking is involved or if you will need a compass. I have not done any of the ones that involve a compass just yet. Um, just recently, we took an adventure to a park called the Upper Tampa Bay Trail and went hunting for some letterboxes. I do want to warn you though, if you're going to an area that's exposed to a lot of the elements and there's a lot of uh, washing away and things like that, you may not be able to find uh, some of the boxes because you know the weather probably just washed it away or what have you. Now there are several hidden at the upper Tampa Bay Trail. We just went along one trail and when we got started I was a little worried because some of the areas had been washed away. But we did find a letter box. It was so exciting and kids love it because the clues are fun things like walk 100 paces until you see a pine tree with a bird house nailed to it and lo and behold we would count out the steps and we'd see a pine tree so you look for these markers and then you you follow along and it's so exciting when you finally find one of these boxes now what to do when you find it okay you don't take it you have to leave it there but what you carry along with you on your adventure is you take your own notebook you take an ink pad and you take your own rubber stamp. It can be hand carved or just one that you purchase. Now, I am currently waiting for a hand carved stamp, but in the meantime, I'm using my Letter Writers Alliance stamp because it's unique to me. And when you get to the location and you find the box, you open it up and you should find a rubber stamp inside of there and a notebook. Um, not, they don't always have a notebook, but usually most of them do. And you stamp that stamp in your notebook, 
and then you stamp your rubber stamp in their notebook and then you sign off on it. Now when you join atlasquest.com it's free. You create your own name for as a letter boxer and you know it's usually something fun. I usually sign it with my name and the city we're from so that the person whose notebook and box that belongs to they can flip through and see all the different people that have found the box and it's really interesting to look through this it's a log book so it's really interesting to look through and see who has been on that same adventure that you have and where they're from and how many people have actually found um, the box so it's it's a lot of fun I highly recommend it um, do be careful as usual if you go on any hiking trails you have to uh, you know take precautions there and um, yeah I'm going to share with you just our most recent hunt some little clips from there so you can get an idea of what the actual box looks like when you find one crab stamp the other two we did we found the fiddler crab what do you think I think this is awesome the other one was a fail yeah it but got well, we got to hide this one back where we found it so let's I hope you enjoyed and I hope this inspires you to get out get outside and possibly go letterboxing thanks guys <laughs>